Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to a fun learning episode in science. OMG, the ground is shaking. Can you feel that? It's an earthquake. Please everybody come down. Come down. Is everybody alright? Alright. Can we shoot again? Sorry for the inconvenience guys. Hello everyone. Welcome to a fun learning episode in science. I'm Sir Loy Lozano, your science and teacher from Angayo National High School, and this is TV Escuela. Have you ever wondered how the land masses, volcanoes, and mountains, the islands and the continents were formed? We have Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, Australia, and Antarctica. Ooh, did they just exist the way they are now? Or just the results of a very long process and sequential event? In this lesson, after watching the video, the learners are expected to Describe and relate the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts to plate tectonic fury. Are you excited? Can you feel the movement of the earth under your feet? No? But guess what? The earth is always moving beneath us. It moves and shifts really, really slowly. And of course, as you know, there's an earthquake somewhere. And if that happens, you can feel the earthquake moving. Earthquake occur when the earth beneath our feet moves or shifts a lot, really quickly, all of a sudden. But the earthquake like that, the dangerous one that we can feel are rare. Most of the time, the land all over the world, the land that we walk on, is moving very slowly. So slowly that nobody can feel it. It moves 2 to 20 centimeters per year or a few centimeters per year. And it takes millions of years to notice it. Their speed is slower than your fingernails. Oh, don't be so sad. Even tectonic plates move very slowly. This slow movement creates, as we know, it creates problems in our planet. Don't you believe me? This actually creates earthquakes, volcanoes, mountains, and trenches. The slow movement is caused by plate tectonic. Tectonics is actually from the ancient Greek word tectonikos, meaning pertaining to building. So, when we talk about plate tectonic, it means the way the earth was built. Oh wow! It's amazing! I put the whole puzzle together. I wonder I'm so happy. Do you know that the Earth is really a jigsaw puzzle? Well, it is! Would you like to know more about it? The Earth we see is like a globe, round and full of land and water. But beneath this land and ocean is a big hidden jigsaw puzzle. The Earth's crust is not a continuous solid land. In fact, it is broken into many pieces like a jigsaw puzzle. This part of the Earth's crust is tectonic plates. There are eight major plates around the world. The Eurasian plate, African plate, Indo-Australian Plate Pacific Plate North American Plate South American Plate Nazca and Antarctic Plate Some of these plates mark the boundaries of the continents like North American Plate South American Plate and African Plate Other plates include more than one continent like Europe and Asia And some minor plates Philippine Sea Plate Arabian Plate Caribbean plate and Scotch plate. In between of these plates are called plate boundaries, where two or more tectonic plates meet. As these plates try to move, either moving apart, moving toward, or slide past each other, a lot of friction and stress builds up. Eventually, when the blockage gives way, the stored energy is released. Thus, Earthquake is produced. Now, students at home, I wanted to take or find a map of different plates around the Earth. 
Now, we have 8 major plates that fit together. Now take this mop and cut this into pieces. Once they are all cut out, try to fit all the pieces together. Can you see the patterns of these plates? I want you to enjoy fitting these patterns of these plates. For example, here we have Pacific plate where the Philippines is nearly located and Eurasian plate. And you can see that Pacific plate right in and Eurasian plate right there. And over time, these plates actually move. So what is happening right now, Pacific plate is moving up and Eurasian plate is moving down. And this causes the earthquake that plates pushes against each other. The top layer that actually moves is called the lithosphere. That layer consists of Earth's crust and part of the upper mantle, and it moves in a big pieces of land called tectonic plates. Why they move? Why plates move? They move because below them is the layer called asthenosphere. The asthenosphere layer is basically liquid-like molten rock that move around deep, deep below the surface and as squishy like lava. Why the rock is molten or in a liquid form? The rock is molten or liquid form because it is really, really hot at the center of the earth itself and its heat aims to go upward and the tectonic plates which is described is sitting on top of the molten rock in the asthenosphere. That's what causes them to move and shift. Plates are divided into two kinds oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust are made up of crust called sima that exists below the ocean. Sima gets its name because it's made from silicon and magnesium and it's made up of basalt and it is heavier. Continental crust exists mainly below land and they made up of silicon and aluminum and therefore named as sial and it is made up of granite and it is lighter. Now plates interact or meet at boundaries. They interact in three different ways. Convergent, divergent, and transform fourth boundary. Let me explain. Imagine that you have modules at home. You're holding one and your sister is holding the other. Now let's pretend that those modules are plates under the earth. If you and your sister push the modules up against each other really hard, what might be the force under the other? That's convergent plate boundary, like continental meeting the oceanic crust. The one plate slides under the other, in a process called subduction. When that happens, it forms mountains and volcanoes over a long period of time. Earthquakes can also happen when these two land masses meet, like the converging two continental plate. Examples of this are Mount Everest, and Mariana Trench, which dip in the ocean. Convergent plate boundary, when two plates move toward each other. And that can be also manifested when two people meeting toward each other, like hugging each other and embracing each other so hard. You know what I mean? Now, our country Philippines is a product of convergent plate boundary. A meeting of two plates like Filipino or Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate. Here in this area is the oceanic crust, which is thinner and heavier because of its basaltic component. There is a continental crust, which is thicker but lighter. The lighter continental plate floats over the top of the oceanic plate, forcing it down and allowing magma to weld up from the Earth's interior. The bending of oceanic crust toward the mantle is a process called subduction. The oceanic crust melts because of too much heat and pressure in the mantle, like the Mount Pinatubo in June 1991. Now this time, imagine those two modules, but instead of pushing them together, you and your sister pulling away from each other. That's what happens when you have a divergent plate boundary. The area of this land is called rift. In some places, you might find giant rift valleys. The East African Rift Valley the Galapagos Rise and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Divergent plate boundary when two plates move separately and that can be manifested when two people moving away from each other. Maybe because they have misunderstanding and all. Have you experienced that? How about Compostela Valley, now Davao de Oro? What plate boundary is our place? Are you sure 100%?
Correct. Compostela Valley or Davao de Oro is a divergent plane boundary. Back to your modules. Now this time, imagine you and your sister put that modules and rub against each other, up and down in a lovable motion. That's what a transform fault boundary looks like, or they call it fault line. This boundary is more likely to create an earthquake. Examples of this boundary is the San Andreas Fault in California, the Alpine Fault in New Zealand. What's new? Remember where the edges meet. What you need? Get a separate sheet of paper for your answers and observation. Do not copy the questions, just write your answer or observation. Now here is the map 1 on page 9 of your module that shows the earthquake distribution around the world. The dark areas are the earthquake epicenters. Take note of the areas where they are closely situated. You answer the following questions. How are earthquakes distributed on the map? Correct. The world's earthquakes are not randomly distributed over the Earth's surface. They tend to be concentrated on narrow zones. Now, where are earthquakes situated? Correct. Some are situated near the edges of the continents. Some are in mid-continents while others are in oceans. Now, look at your world map on page 11 of your module and compare the earthquake epicenters. Name of the countries where earthquakes may not happen. Correct! Some possible answers are a large part of the Pacific Ocean, northernmost Asia, majority of Europe, eastern portion of North and South America, and Western Africa. Here is the map to the Earth's major volcanoes on page 8 of your module. Take note that the dark dots are the active volcanoes. Questions How are volcanoes distributed? Correct. Volcanoes are not randomly distributed. Majority of them are found along the edges of some continents. Next, where are they situated? Correct. Majority of volcanoes are found along the edges of some continents, particularly in western coast of North and South America, East and Southeast Asia. Cut Map 1 and Map 2 along the edges on page 9 of your module. Then, place Map 1, the distribution of earthquakes, over Map 2, the distribution of volcanoes. Take note, remember to place the edges of the continents of each map exactly on top of each other. Bring the maps over any of the bright source of light available. It can be ceiling lamp, sunlight, flashlight, cell phone light. Make sure you can see where the dark areas and dots are. Question. How do you compare the location of majority of earthquake epicenters with the location of volcanoes around the world? Correct! Earthquakes, epicenters, and volcanoes are both situated at the same locations. Here is the map 3. The distribution of mountain ranges. The coarse and darker areas are the mountain ranges of the world. Cat map 3 along the edges on page 9 of your module. Then, place it under map 1 and map 2. Then, bring the map 1, 2, and 3 over any bright source of light available. Question. How will you relate the distribution of mountain ranges with the distribution of earthquake epicenters and volcanoes? Correct! 
mountain ranges are found in places where volcanoes and earthquake epicenters are also located. Can you imagine that? Hmm. You have seen the location of volcanoes, mountain ranges, and majority of earthquake epicenters. Now the question, what do you think is the basis of scientists in dividing Earth's lithosphere into several plates? Correct. Geologic activities such as seismicity or occurrence of earthquake, volcanism, and mountain formation are the basis of scientists in dividing Earth's lithosphere. What's more? Recircle the ring. Plate movements may result in earthquakes. Earthquakes may happen anytime, either on land or underwater. Earthquakes on land can be caused either by tectonic plates movement or volcanic eruptions. Earthquakes under the sea can cause a tsunami. Our country, the Philippines, is situated in a place where plate tectonics is very evident, the Ring of Fire. It is a long chain of volcanoes and other tectonically active structures that surround the Pacific Ocean. The Ring of Fire is one of the most geologically active areas on Earth and a site for frequent earthquakes and powerful volcanic eruptions. Here is Figure 2, Active Volcanoes in the Ring of Fire. On page 12 of your module, it shows the active volcanoes in triangles all over the Pacific region. Now, you will realize that the volcanoes in Figure 2 are also situated in the areas of plate movement. Questions Using the map in Figure 2, which volcanoes are familiar to you? Then why? Correct! The most possible answers are Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines Mount Fuji in Japan Mount Parikutin in Mexico and Mount St. Helen in Washington Then why these volcanoes? Because they are the popular ones Next question Why is this area called the Pacific Ring of Fire? Hmm. Correct, because active volcanoes, faults, and earthquake epicenters are almost around the Pacific region. Next activity, rethink the risk. You have seen the maps of the Pacific Ring of Fire in the previous activity. This time, let's see how our country Philippines is at risk of disasters related to geologic activities. As we are known to be resilient or flexible, we have high hopes that our resilience could also mean preparedness at all times. What you need? What you have to do? Go to page 15 of your module. Now look at the Philippine map. Can you pinpoint where you are now? Study the hazard maps found on pages 16 to 19. That will show you areas in our country that are prone to natural disasters like earthquakes, landslide, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. Now look at the geographical or political map of the Philippines on page 15 of your module. Try to compare the areas in figures 3 to 6. That is on page 16 to 19, the provinces with darker colors. These are the high-risk areas to the specified natural disasters. Based on your observations, which regions are high-risk in terms of earthquakes? Correct. Region 1, 2, 3, and 11. How about the high-risk in terms of landslides? Correct. Regions 1, 3, 
5, 7, 8, and 12. How about the regions that are high risk in terms of volcanic eruptions? Correct. Region 5 and Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. If you will choose a province to live, where will it be? Then why? I'd rather to live in Palawan. Why? Because there's no geological risk in this area. Then why do you think those areas are high risk for earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis? Correct, because of its location along the Ring of Fire or Typhoon Belt, a large Pacific Ocean region where many of Earth's volcanic eruptions and earthquakes occur. What I have learned, great job! We're almost done with this module. Let's summarize what you have learned from the lesson and activities by choosing the correct word. Words are plates and floats. The correct words continental and denser. The correct answers, theory, move, geologic. The Russian play. The correct answers Volcanoes, Location and Edges. Correct answer.
sensors, seismicity, volcanism, and bases. What I can do? Note, this is a make-believe activity. Pretend and internalize the role you are asked to do. Then enjoy! You are an active member of your school's supreme student government. Your city or municipal mayor highly commends and accepts students' participation in solving current problems and issues. Thus, he or she opened a social media page or account where students can communicate openly to him. On a piece of coupon band, copy the graphic organizer and write a draft of your social media comment suggesting ways by which you can contribute to government efforts in reducing damage due to earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. Make sure to enumerate specific steps to achieve your goals or suggestions. Use the following hashtags. Hashtag Youth in Action. Hashtags Disaster Preparedness. You may also mention or paste or draw pictures of disaster hazards you have observed within your city or municipality that may also catch the attention of your mayor. Your output of the make-believe activity will be rated by your teacher according to the following criteria. The standard rubric, appropriateness or disaster risk reduction, 5 points. Accuracy, taken from the real scenario, 5 points. Grammar and spelling, English or vernacular, that is 5 points. Techniques or persuasiveness, humor in words and pictures. 5 points and a total of 20 points. Please send that make-believe performance task through Facebook or through email to your science 10 teachers. Good luck and enjoy! There you have it my dear science 10 learners. I hope you've learned from this video. At this time, I will recognize some of the references in crafting my videos from the Google and YouTube channel. For more fun science learning, tune in again next time. Again, this has been Sir Lloyd Rosano, your science 10 teacher from Mangaya National High School, saying, despite this COVID-19, be a proton, think positive, keep calm, and do science. Dito sa TV Skwela, sa pag-aaral, sama-sama. Bye-bye!